what is going on guys, it is Lely 2 sxc and this is episode 5 of Building the Dream Team. All the previous episodes are in the description, but we start off this episode in the FA Cup in the round of last 16 against Fulham. And anyone that's seen my previous episodes will know I played Fulham not too long ago in the league. And Emmanuel Son was terrorising me without scoring, but this time he gets his team off to a great start and gives them an early lead. But if you see my previous episodes, you'll know that I also scored a brilliant free kick with Nicky Shorey, which I tried to go for another long range effort, but it was an easy save for the keeper. Now this time Guthrie runs out wide and plays a pass to Lafondra who lets it run onto his right foot and forces an amazing save from the keeper. Don't know what this keeper's name is, it's not Schwarzer, it's a bit of a painful one to say as well. So now you see McCleary intercepts the pass and gets a bit lucky with his own pass as it ricochets kindly for Blackman who gives the keeper no chance as he buries him into the far corner. Now Berbatave runs down the wing, shows a bit of his Berbatav magic, puts it on a plate for Rodriguez, but Rodriguez wastes the opportunity and hits it wide, doesn't even make the keeper work for it so you can see it's a bit of a low quality first half so I tried to play my way out the back and this is the trouble that I sometimes get myself into as I give the ball away really high up the pitch but my keeper bails me out and this time I play my way out of trouble and I end up getting a chance and their keeper uh, saves a pretty much standard shot now the whole half was about to go on without anything really happening and then McEnough who I always turn for inspiration scored a late winner and puts me into the quarterfinals and when I saw who I was drawn against, I had a massive smile on my face because I've already thumped these like once before and that was Arsenal so I'm already looking forward to the semi-finals against Everton or Chelsea. Hopefully I just haven't jinxed myself. So we move on to the next match of this episode and that's against QPR at Loftus Road in the league and it took me another 20 minutes just to get a half a chance. So I'm starting off really slow against these crap teams and to be honest actually QPR are a good team in this game because it's filled with overrated players. But these are their first real chance after robbing me high up the pitch, gets the ball whipped in to Zamora who makes good contact on the header but it's not on target so it doesn't really trouble my goalkeeper. What you're about to see now is one of the biggest piss takes in Pez. Bear in mind I've got no auto passing gun, no auto clearance on, I make some space for easy passes, I give it to my goalkeeper who then decides to panic when I've got two easy passes on there and one easy one on the radar and he gives it straight to Terrapt who then punishes me and then you know it just pisses me off when that happens. So I tried to hit back straight away with a great pass there and a great effort on goal but somehow says our managers to hold on to that but my goalkeeper panics when there's no one around him. So we go start off into the second half and I'm trying to force things so early on I give the ball away cheaply and Zamora gets put through on goal but my keeper stays up strong and I'm not see behind for a corner. So from the corner I win the header but then Diakite has a great effort on goal but is comfortably saved by Taylor and then in the 56th minute I get my first real quality moment in the second half. Now we all love to score these type of goals where we make defenders chase shadows and that's what I do in the middle of the park as I get the ball out wide to Cummins. Cummins takes a touch, has a look up, sees Lafondra running across his defender and Lafondra buries the keeper, makes it 1-1. So I thought that's it, you know, that's the moment of magic I needed to get me going but nothing happened up until the 90th minute where I worked the ball towards Jimmy Kebe. Kebe gets it, well draws the defender out wide, gives it to Pagrebniak but Pagrebniak only sits straight into the goalkeeper's arms and I dropped two points there so that's two points dropped against QPR and the last match against Liverpool I dropped two points so I've dropped four, well that's back to back draws so I've dropped four points and it's pretty damaging result this one because all the teams around me pick up a few points and it makes me drop from third to sixth so now I may open that the next team I face just shouts easy three points and when I see Wigan's name I'm like yes I was so happy it felt like I won a massive bet at the bookies and we all know there's no such thing as the easy three points as I was about to find out the hard way as we see the first chance of the game goes to DeSanto but my keeper makes a brilliant save. DeSanto tries to keep it alive but my defender clears it and I was about to say I learned the hard way because I put in no effort whatsoever until the 26th, 27th minute as I get Robson Carney away. He was on form this match so I decided to go for goal and when he hit it I was like you bent bastard but then when he hit, hit the post I was like thank fuck for that. But once that went in, my team started to play a lot better, the passing was that bit sharper, the movement came a lot better. So that's when you see these sorts of goals go in, where a brilliant passing move gets smashed in like that. At this moment, the confidence was sky high, and straight from the kickoff, Blackman wins the ball in their half really high up the pitch. He's got very little support, so he plays a clever little back heel to Robson Carnu, who has a great effort from range, but is denied by a very good save. So that ends what would have been a really, really dull half of football, which it still was a bit dull, but at least I get a two goal lead from it. So I was starting to relax straight away in the second half, but Jordi Gomez wakes me up and says, it's not going to be that easy. And my goalkeeper decides to just remind me that he can make a meal of things as well. 
So now De Santo, out of nothing, conjures up a goal and gives Wigan some hope. So now I'm thinking, Lely, you cannot and must not drop points against Wigan. And Dicko was about to make my nightmares come true. But then my keeper comes out and makes a brilliant save. So now I'm just killing off time any way I can. And then right at the end of the game, Jason Roberts comes on and his first touch, he crashes a header against the bar. But I was just happy to keep the ball at that end of the pitch. So at the start of the match, I was so happy that I was playing Wigan. At the end, I was just glad the match was over. And Tottenham actually lose. So it becomes a really good... Um, three points for me and the rest of the teams around me win apart from Chelsea who lose to United and just look how tight it is at the top of the table one set of good results can move me up to second one set of bad results can move me down to eighth so it looks like we've got a good interesting battle for Europe this season so we move on to the last match of this episode which is at Villa Park against Aston Villa and the first chance of the match falls to me as I run out wide to attract a defender out wide and make some space in the box and I give it to Hunt who checks back onto his right foot goes for the near post but the keeper tips it behind I don't know if it's going in or not but it's a slow start for me and after 20 minutes I start to assert my dominance and I put a ball into the box it's knocked down for Eduardo Murillo who with his ability should have at least hit the target so that was a bit of a poor effort from him so now I get the ball to Jimmy Kebe who runs out wide and he puts in a Frightening cross for this defender, must have made him sweat a bit as he thought it could have been an own goal but it goes behind for a corner and then from that corner they clear it and I get the ball to Guthrie, Guthrie gives it to Lafondra, great first touch, goes for the far corner but forces a very good save from the keeper, tried to keep it alive but then the defender gets to it and clears it away. So now we're pushing really hard, I'm trying to make use of the dominance I get. So I get the ball to Eduardo Murillo, look at this, he's got three defenders around him so he plays a nice little pass out makes a bit of space for himself gets it onto his weaker foot and has a good effort on goal but it's saved and put it behind for a corner but then I'm still trying to push on right towards the end of the half I'm not going to give up whatsoever and then I win the ball up really high up the pitch and I dink one in and a brilliant volley but it's smashed straight out of the keeper puts it behind for a corner and then right at the end of the first half this is where Aston Villa really get their first chance I thought things aren't going to go right for me this much look what my keeper does just comes out and does nothing there's no need for him to go out there there's no danger whatsoever you can see that was their only effort of pure dominating them so unlucky not to be winning this match and then at the start of the second half they just go typical route one english football benteke wins the ball in the air great chest control agban low's pace is way too much for me there as he burns past new high but then my keeper makes a save or shall i say a great double save so from the corner of the balls whipped into Enzabio flicks it on and somehow falls to Vla who I actually thought had scored at the time but he manages to smash it wide from there. So now Eduardo Murillo plays one through to Lefandro. Lefandro rides this challenge. I thought instead of sweating it he deserves to go for goal and he gets a lucky deflection and I needed some sort of look to break these lot down and I got it as I get the lead. So now I was going in for the kill and thought I need to end this game. I don't want to give Villa any more chances. So I worked this uh, chance to Eduardo Murillo who has a good shot from range and he forces a good save from the keeper. So now I get the ball back to Eduardo Murillo I was thinking should I go for another one from range. I get it to Lafondra instead and then he gets onto his left foot and forces another good save from the keeper and then I nearly got this bizarre own goal but somehow manages to just go on the wrong side of the post for me. So this is the moment where it becomes a really bad match for me as I tried to play Agban Lafondra offside but I failed but the worst moment is yet to come because I know if this was at the end of the pitch, I was not going to get a penalty. Look at this, my keeper gets a good hand on the ball, then touches the player. That is not a penalty and I definitely know if it's at the end, I'm not going to get one. So, Petrov sends my keeper the wrong way, but then just minutes later, Hellman goes for a nice little run, plays it to Wyman. Nice little passing move here, a bit of luck as it gets through his legs, but a brilliant finish from Ben Teke. Makes it 2-1 and that's game over. It ends 2-1 and... I'm really really unlucky not to get a single point from that game. I'm actually pissed off that I didn't get anything from that game. But that's football for you. You can dominate a match and get nothing from it. But that was a really damaging defeat as nearly every team, I think every team around me does win. And it makes me drop from 3rd down to 7th. So that was a bad set of results for me. And the only thing that stopped me from getting down to 8th was Fulham lost. So that's the end of this episode guys. But a quick look into the next episode. My next four matches are West Ham. Chelsea, Swansea and Manchester United. The last four matches read one win, one loss and two draws. So not exactly the best. But can I get my teams act together and push for a European spot? Or will I slowly fade away? Be sure to subscribe and find out. If you like this video remember to give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching.